Hi, I'm Juro and this is Morena Morena Presents, a podcast where I interview different interesting people every week to hopefully shed light on what it means to be a dark-skinned Filipino. Today I'm talking to Angela Martinez, model, content creator, and dog mom. We talk about being labeled the Morena content creator, assuming shared experiences, being real with her followers, and more. Don't forget to follow Morena Morena on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to Morena Morena Presents on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or Apple Podcasts. Thanks and enjoy the interview. Thanks for being on the podcast, Angela. It's been a while since I've seen you last. Yeah, I think, almost, I think almost two was, years. Yeah, the shoot we had That's in the house. long. I know. Uh, but yeah, thanks for taking the time to talk to me about thanks this for whole thing and being part. And so yeah, basically I start... I start the podcast, usually I ask my guests what their Morena or Moreno experience is growing up. So what is your Morena or Morena experience? Morena experience. Um, I actually didn't grow up in a household that really pressured me into my skin color. Or I wouldn't say household, like an environment because I was homeschooled. So I was like really sheltered on beauty standards and on society. So I never really got any bad experiences. It was just a normal childhood, I would say. And on my research, I found out like your family is pretty dark skinned. I mean, your like research. Not, yeah, research. Yeah. <laughs> your research or your yeah. stocking. <laughs> um, research. <laughs> same, same. But yeah, I think, I don't know, because in my case, I'm the darkest one in the family. And I yeah. think the, the novelty of being brown skinned is even more intense since I'm the odd one out, I guess. Mm-hmm. But in your case, you look like, you look a lot like your siblings. Are your parents dark skinned too? Um... Yeah, they're, I, the thing, I guess because we're all kind of the same shade, some, some are lighter than the others. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily call like my skin dark. Yeah. But we all do look the same. We all have this same tone, but yeah. For me, dark is like tan. That's like dark. Tan, but tan, everyone, like yeah, ev- yeah, but everyone's, everyone's different with how they see it. But yeah, we're all the same. Yeah, more or less the same kind of shade, yeah. which is interesting. I don't know if that if that plays into like your upbringing without people being too ju- judgmental about how you look. Um, were your parents or your family members the type to criticize how you looked, or like were they the type to? Well, you did say they weren't really pressuring you guys into fitting in with the beauty standards of what is going on around like the usual Filipino beauty standard of yeah. preferring fair skin. Why do you think that is for your family? Um, well, we, we grew up in a very strict Christian household, so we weren't really materialistic mm-hmm. on those, like on that aspect. And like, yeah, sure. We watched TV, we saw commercials, but for me, like when I think about it more, it, my parents and my family have no like um, what is it, influence on how I thought the beauty standard was. It's what I saw in commercials on the billboards. I remember mm-hmm. like looking, going through the aisles. Like I, I was pretty young. I remember going through the aisles pretty young, and I would ask my mom, "Oh, I want the papaya widening soap." Yeah. And she didn't. She didn't care. She just okay. Yeah, gotta go ahead. And then she and then I I would say, "Oh, I want it because I want to lighten my skin." Because yeah. that's just what I saw. I wasn't pressured or anything. But like my, my, my parents were supportive in us when we were growing up with anything we did. But so I could say, yeah, it's when I started seeing billboards, commercials, or celebrities, that's when I, I thought it was normal. I thought it was a thing, you know? Yeah. No, but that's interesting. I mean, because usually the people I've talked to, their family members are one of the first first ones to impose that beauty standard Mm -hmm. like they'd always criticize the kids having dark skin or telling them not to go outside too much and all that usual stuff so it's interesting how in your case it was more of a like outside the house influence 
that affected you? <laughs> yeah, being so sheltered when I started like looking at things and everything. I was like, oh, I guess that's how it's supposed to be. I didn't yeah. think of it negatively. I was just thinking, oh, that's how that's how it is. That's, that's how, how it is. It, yeah, yeah, that's how it is. Which is kind of messed up. If you're that is kind of messed that. up. Yeah, I mean, since it becomes like something automatic and scary for a kid to just to just pick it up without being aware of all that yeah it's just like i don't know stuff. what it is I, like, I just thought that it's it's good for your skin it's the mm-hmm. paya it's a fruit yeah 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 <laughs> it's a fruit so i thought it was healthy so yeah that that that's my experience of growing up nice and i was gonna get into like how it is what how it was for you in school but then you meant you did mention you were homeschooled yeah. <laughs> so like you didn't have that usual uh, classmates bullying you or teasing yeah, you about. I, I never got bullied for my skin color. Nice. No, I'm just thinking of how how different that is for a lot of people where it's also yeah. like a big a big part of their upbringing is the bullying and teasing from like school mates. I mean, well, classmates. I didn't get bullied. We do bully and tease each other a lot since we're a big family. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of siblings. But yeah, just the typical sibling fights. Uh-huh. And it was understood among you guys now. It was all playful, like not to take it too seriously. Yeah. But then if someone's crying, it's like, haha, you're crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's pretty cool. I mean, pretty cool of your family to... I don't know. It sounds like a very chill environment to be growing up in. And yeah, not something I hear a lot. Yeah. We we were more focused on attitude, being uh-huh. respectful, like, you know, make sure you best so, make sure you yeah. you um call your elders the proper terms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were more taught on etiquette. Did you find and yourself how to look? Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Did you find yourself um creating any like coping mechanisms to deal with what you saw on billboards and on tv maybe but then you did say like you didn't take it as oh i'm not attractive looking because my skin doesn't look like this you just accepted it more of as that's the way it is but did you find yourself uh trying to cope in any way besides buying the papaya soap (laughs) or was that the peak of trying to deal with how you look versus what you thought was the norm? Um, I would say it was when I started getting into modeling or mm-hmm. when I started posting on Instagram. And I, I never got bullied for my skin color, but I started feeling pressured because uh, back in the days, I would say 2016, 2015, there was a lot of light skin models. Yeah. Like only recently people are trying to be diverse with like skin color, yeah. but there were a lot of light skin, light skin to foreign models. Yeah. So like that was, that was like the two categories, right? Yeah. And I mean, yeah. Go what ahead. Were you say? Go ahead. Okay. And so I would be pressured like, oh, maybe I have to be lighter. Maybe I have to look like this. Maybe I have to look more foreign because that's what they wanted. They want they they don't want you to look Filipino, yeah. but you're in a Filipino um, industry. Yeah. So the the pressure was really big back then. But I just since I came from a very um, sheltered sheltered environment, it didn't really affect me that much. Yeah. But it did make me feel a little bad that maybe I could be booking more jobs if I look this way. Like yeah. it was like a, like a maybe if I was like this or like that, it didn't, it never really brought me down, Yeah, you know, but it was there. The pressure was there. Yeah. And it's funny. You should bring up like the years you were coming up as a model. You said around 2015, 2016. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, <laughs> That was around the time when content creation and influencer marketing was still kind of in its, not infancy, but it was getting maybe like adolescence, kind of. Yeah. And I think there were only a handful of Morena content creators or models who were um, gaining a following around that time. You being one of the few. 
And uh, as one of this or our generation's Morena content creators and models, at least from what I've observed, do you feel like being branded, branded as the Morena is something that happened to you? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I have a lot to say. Yeah, you know, I have a lot to say about that. Let's go. Well, so when I first started in late 2015, mm-hmm. like started posting on Instagram, Instagram was booming. Um, I would say I was more confident in posting swimwear yeah. and like lifestyle and like food. And then I started getting these, I started getting messages. I started getting um, comments saying like, oh, I love your skin. It's so nice. And I'm, like, like what I was saying earlier, people were saying, oh, um, you're so brave. You're yeah. so, you're so um, confident with your skin or everything. And I always thought that they meant that I was confident wearing a bikini because I know like a lot of people are shy wearing a bikini. But then as I, as I um, progressed more online, I realized that it's, it wasn't just wearing a bikini or, or like wearing like revealing clothes or, or like, you know, sexy clothes. It was more like on the skin color. Yeah. And then when I started getting, I started getting interviews for magazines and the questions would be like, how do you feel about being Morena? And then, I, w- I would never know how to feel about that because yeah. I'm like, it's the skin I grew up in. It's, yeah. it's what I am. And I know that not everyone feels this way, but for me, I, I'm not, I'm not defined by my skin color. I'm confident being myself and this is who I am. So I would say that I feel, I feel like I want them to see more than me just being a confident Morena girl, yeah. right? And I know that a lot of people, they, they use that as their branding, and which is great. That's good for them because how I've, I feel like I, I haven't been through, like, I haven't been through the experiences the majority of Filipinos been through here. Yeah. So I feel like I don't really have a say on that. I can't just be like, oh, you're doing good. You're doing great. Like, keep going. You know, the toxic, the toxic positivity. Yeah. Like, no, I, I haven't been to that. Like, you've heard my, my childhood experiences. Like, I was chill. I was fine. I didn't go through any bullying. I didn't, I didn't feel bad about my skin color. So I'm happy that girls and even guys, they get motivated and I'm happy to help people, but I, I feel uncomfortable with the label. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. It's interesting you brought up how, I mean, for yourself, having not experienced the usual, I guess, Moreno or Morena experience growing up here. Um, yeah, I don't know. It takes, it takes something to distance yourself from like this whole advocacy and the cause when you don't genuinely feel like you can empathize with everyone else behind it. I don't know. I find that very like a noble thing to do. And uh, yeah, I mean, being branded as one of the Morena content creators, especially back then. Um, yeah, I guess there's no escaping what the public sees on their news feeds or on their timelines especially when you have someone like yourself who is so kind of deviates from the usual filipino expectation of wanting to see just fair skin models and content creators out there Mm -hmm. i think the yeah the attention on you is warranted and uh must be a really weird spotlight to be under i mean i don't know if you're if you get as much press for being a morena as before but i'm on my research again <laughs> i saw that you were part of a lot of a lot of these yeah. lists of dark-skinned role models to follow or dark-skinned influencers to follow really i didn't even know that i think there were <laughs> you had one for metro 
you had, well, there was this one preview one where they showed just your photo for 15 best lipsticks that complement Morena's skin. Then there's this one for star style, beach babes mm-hmm. that remind us of summer all year long. It's, it's just like, I, maybe it's my upbringing, maybe it's my environment, but I, I feel like you're, you're praising me for something that should be normal in this country. Yeah. And that's when I feel like, like, that's, that's why I feel like that's such a big problem already. Yeah. Right? Like, you're praising someone for being brown in the yeah. Philippines. Like, can you, can you check, can you check on that? Can you, can yeah. you see why? Like, can you see why you're praising people for being brown? So, I don't, I don't say much about it because there's, there's a lot. Yeah. How I feel about the situation. And some people don't understand. And there was this one time I made a post about it. And some, of course, there's always going to be haters. Yeah. And so one girl was saying, um, well, because I said that I don't define myself by my skin color. Yeah. And then one girl said that I was wrong because she defines herself by her skin color because she was bullied and everything like, like, you yeah. know, she went through it and I didn't, I didn't say anything, but I was just like, you know, we all have different, we all have different experiences. You can, this is why I don't label myself as the Morena girl because yeah. I'm not someone to look up to in that department. There's other people that there's other people that are very, um, like they're very good at that. You know, because they've been through it, so you can relate to them. So it's it's something that I've felt since I was eighteen when I when Mm -hmm. I first started this, and I I I guess I saw this opportunity when you asked me for wanting to be on your podcast. I was like, you know, maybe it's time I tell people how I actually feel because they're always just labeling me, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Jeez, that's that's a lot. I mean, it's a, it's a really interesting case because I don't know that point of view is such a a novelty. Shoot. Well, like no. how 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 do you how does this make you feel as someone that didn't? I'm interviewing you. Yeah, yeah go ahead. No. How does go, go how on. does how does this make you feel? Because I know that you, I can't just say this to like random people, my followers, yeah. because what if like they don't know me personally? Yeah, and they might get offended yeah but it's just my personal experience so how does this make you feel like i want to know honestly i think it's pretty yeah like i said earlier it's a pretty noble thing because like one of my filters here for the for moreno moreno in general is i want to feature people who have something to say about the cause who resonate with the the whole advocacy and uh, yeah i don't want to just have people on who want to be on it just for the sake of being on it i want them to have like an experience being a morena in the philippines and then your experience is pretty unique and it's not the usual one but for someone who doesn't want to label themselves as morena personally but then having the whole internet and the whole (laughs) like social media label you as that without knowing your story i guess there's some element of assuming that you've gone through the usual moran experiences Mm -hmm. that we all go through um yeah that interaction is strange i mean we also can't assume that we all go through the same things as you said and that girl who commented on your photo about your moran experience um yeah for some people they define themselves with their uh by their skin color and then yeah they exactly can't, they can't get mad at you for not having that experience and i think it's yeah commendable that you take the time to say how you don't or you can't empathize with everyone else because you are acknowledging that sheltered upbringing and that privilege of having not experienced all these other things i don't know it's making me think it's making me think yeah well yeah i'm just i'm just being honest i'm not gonna just 
all of a sudden be like, oh yeah, Marana Power or yeah. or like I've never said that word on my Instagram. Yeah. I've never said anything like that on my Instagram, on my social media. The only times when I'm there is because of the articles I have yeah. or other people labeling me that, which is like, okay, you know, if it makes, if it, if I'm motivating people in a good way, then I don't yeah. mind. Like there's still nothing wrong with that. And I do appreciate, I appreciate my followers. Yeah. Of course. I appreciate everyone that supports me. I appreciate the interviews. I appreciate the exposure, but you know, I'm just, yeah. Like, yeah, I got you. Right. It's you know, it's just I'm just happy to make people motivated. Yeah. I think in the end, the the effect you have on on people is is a positive one, especially when it comes to empowering others. And uh, yeah, if if we if we're the ones who incorrectly assume that you have these experiences to back, or yeah, yeah you've had these experiences, then I think that's on us. <laughs> no, it is on us. Yeah, honestly, yeah. If there's anyone at fault, it's for us to. It's for us for having assumed that you you went all the you went through all these things. Yeah. Yeah, it's just when I get when I receive messages of you know they say that they struggle and they're so happy to see me like and everything. Sometimes I'm like, I I don't know what to say to that because I yeah. didn't struggle. You know, like. I don't want to give toxic positivity. That's like my main thing. So yeah. sometimes I do reply and be like, I'm so happy that you're confident now in your skin or, you know, I say that, but that's just, that's the honesty of it. Yeah. Do you ever feel a attention coming from, well, is there ever a desire for you to relate more with those people who message you? Or is that really not, not a problem for you to, keep acknowledging uh your truth about yeah being morena um i do wish like i'm I'm still human so i'm still gonna feel i'm still gonna feel for these people especially they're my followers and they look up they look up to me i hate saying that (laughs) they look up to me that's fine that's fine (laughs) yeah um so i wish that i could say more but yeah. I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm. I would be lying to myself and to them. Yeah. And then they find out that, oh, I I didn't have any boy, bullying in my life, you know. Yeah. And then they find out that, and then they find out that I was in a, a safe environment and I was um, sheltered. So it's like I'm not. I'm not gonna fake it just yeah. to make just to. I would say add to the branding. Yeah. To the branding. <laughs> No, that makes sense. And yeah, going back to again to how noble that is of you. Because I feel like other people would just run with it. I mean, just to further their brand. And yeah. I mean, thinking. don't get me wrong. There are people that do that. Like there are some celebs or public figures that... Mm-hmm promote being like they use the hashtag or they promote yeah. there's they're being tan or brown and then you see them promote a widening product yeah. or something like that and you're just like where do you stand yeah because it's such as it's this is also one of the reasons why i don't talk about it so much on my social media because it's such it's such a bigger problem than 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 like it's not just surface level yeah. Like it's deeper because everyone been through majority of people been through a tough experience with it. Yeah. So that's why I don't talk about it because like what I said, I haven't been through it. I'm not educated on that. That's what, that's the word. I'm not educated on it. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me of this one comment I got a while back from one of my earlier episodes. Um, the, the guy commented, on how the person I interviewed wasn't Morena enough for him. <laughs> I'm not sure if you caught that, but that, that was that whole thing. And it's still up there on one of the posts. And yeah, I'll just leave it up to the audience to look for it. But yeah, he said um, basically something to the effect of 
he doesn't consider this girl morena because she wasn't dark enough and therefore he doesn't feel represented by her even though mm-hmm. she went through yeah the usual morena experience being bullied being teased okay yeah. um all that damages to the self-esteem and all that so despite her having gone through um all those experiences the guy who commented still won't recognize <laughs> her as Morena because on the surface levels, uh, superficially, she wasn't Morena, which is kind yeah. of the opposite in your case where I feel I'm like more you, would, you would, yeah, you could <laughs> more, say I'm that. I'm more Morena. <laughs> yeah, let's say for the guy, I'm pretty sure he would consider you 100% Morena because, yeah, your skin tone is exactly in that range of being Morena for him. Mm-hmm. But then now, what if you don't have those experiences growing up of being bullied, teased, and mm-hmm. that whole thing about your self-esteem? Yeah. So qualifying being Morena is, is weird <laughs> in your case. I don't know. Oh, you, you, you're looking like more and more confused about the situation. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's fine. It's fine. I really welcome like all kinds of perspectives on the topic because yeah, I'm just trying to trying to learn whatever I can about the whole experience. And then, and then I'm sure that there are also other people like you who have uh, grown up in this in a similar way and who don't really consider themselves to have gone through all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But then in our context, like online in the current Filipino social media age we're living in. Yeah, if they do post a picture of themselves, you get all these comments of, "Wow, thank you, thank you for being so brave for mm-hmm. showing your dark skin like that." Even when you personally don't mean to have that message or even advocacy. Yeah, which is also it reminds me of that. Yeah, that time when we talked about this whole thing um, after the shoot we did which I always reference when people ask me about um, or when I get interviewed about Morena Morena. You, I remember very distinctly how you said, why can't I post this photo without having, having it be an advocacy for dark skin? Yeah, which Damn, still strikes I me today. I said that? I think you did, I don't yeah. Even, I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah, or you said something like, I just want to post a photo of myself. It doesn't have to be... A, like an empowerment thing. I remember ranting to you though when you were dropping me off at the gas station. So yeah. maybe it was it was during then. Yeah. And I don't know. Could you speak more about? Yeah, but let's get into those messages you've been receiving lately. Um, it's just the usual when people will say that I'm so brave for posting. Like I'm such a I'm a beautiful Morena, which is like. That's great. Like, yeah. I'm not saying, I just put a disclaimer because there's always going to be people. I'm not saying that their compliments mean nothing. Yeah. I appreciate everything, but I'm just saying that when people tell me that I'm a brave Morena, I'm a brave brown person posting on the internet, it makes me feel like, what does that even mean? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like, I, I just feel like, what does it mean? Maybe, but then I have to, I have to flip my thinking around because I've been on, I've been on social media for so long. I I have to flip my thinking around and I know that they're, they're just projecting, they're projecting on me Mm -hmm. and not in a bad way. They're just, yeah, yeah, not in a bad way. They're just projecting on me. And like, I taught myself how to just, just accept it Mm -hmm. and just be like, if it makes them like what I said earlier, if it makes them feel good about themselves, then that's great. Yeah, but I, not, I don't have anything else to yeah. contribute to them having a hard time. All I can say is um, don't care what other people think. Mm-hmm. And I've read in yeah, those other interviews you did on my research, <laughs> how, you, how you really advocate for loving the body you're in and um, not minding or not caring what other people think. And... Uh, yeah, where does that come from? Is that something you learned growing up 
being surrounded by the your family yeah like what i said we weren't really materialistic we were more on etiquette or acceptance or it's it i i don't even know because we never really talked about body image Mm -hmm. or anything but my parents were always saying be healthy you know the typical yeah filipino parents eat your veggies your rice (laughs) just just that kind but yeah Honestly, I don't know where it comes from. Maybe it's just the fact that I've been through so much as well growing up that I couldn't accept my body. Yeah. And then it came, and then when girls would say that they want to look like me or they want they want to know like what I do and it's just like I don't even know what I'm doing, right? Yeah. Like I don't even know what I'm doing. So um it's still it's a work in it's a work in progress so that's why i'm always like saying just be happy with what you are because you're the only person that can make yourself better yeah and the only um the only competition is yourself and so like don't like stop looking at other people Mm -hmm. that's (laughs) that's all i have to say some really great advice uh no, I'm still thinking about <laughs> the earlier stuff you said. I had all these questions about who your Morena role models are. <laughs> but then I guess that's ugh, out of the bag. Anymore. I'm just adjusting. Huh. If we can talk more about it if you want to. <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. Um, huh. But you, you feel okay like admitting this or like mentioning this to the podcast? Well, yeah, because okay. yeah. I think it's been, yeah, I've been online for so long. Yeah. And it's kind of like, they, they know they know this about me, they know that, but do they actually know how I feel yeah. about, about everything else? So I don't think it's a bad thing. And if people, like, I'm pretty um, confident with yeah. what I with what I think about the situation, I'm pretty confident. And if people don't like agree or if they get mad or yeah. if they, if they don't want to look at it in my point of view, then that's up, that's up to them. Yeah. Oh no, I respect that totally. And yeah, if anyone comes after you after this, <laughs> it's okay. We, we got you. Marina Marina is, we've had our hand in dealing with difficult people. And I saw your recent story. I know. Oh, what a, <laughs> Even like when I was scrolling oh through your post, I was just like, I was like, lol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I know what it's about already. I'm not gonna. Uh. Yeah. Huh. But you can't even get mad at people that are like that. Well, that's one I thing know. I learned. I can't even get mad at people that are like that because they're going through their own thing and they just, yeah. they're used to projecting on mm-hmm. people online, especially. So. Yeah, that sometimes they're just so focused on just wanting to believe this one thing and everything else, I'm going to just shut it off. Uh, it's annoying. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things why I didn't want to talk about it before. Yeah. Because I guess I would just always just dismiss it in my mind. And I didn't want, like, I didn't, I didn't want to get um, attacked or neg- negative, negativity from it. Yeah. Or I didn't want to be questioned. So it took me it took me a while to really sort through how I felt about this whole situation. Yeah. So I, even before before we called, I was like going through my head, like, what is it? Like what what yeah. do I feel about this? Right. Because I was never asked specifically about this. I was always asked, like, how does it feel to be like so confident and blah blah? blah you know, like how yeah. does it like you post all of this and you have so many followers. Like I, I never really got like personal about it. Yeah. So I took, it took me a while to really think about it. Just like, like Angela, how do you feel about being labeled Marana? Mm-hmm. And so it made, for me, I still think that it's, it's, I, like I'm afraid to say I I don't want to be labeled it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because of like why 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 am I afraid to not want to be labeled that right? Like 
Yeah. Why, why do I feel afraid to even speak out about it? Because of what's surrounding the whole... Yeah, yeah, no, I yeah. get that. Yeah. Dang. This got a... This took a turn. <laughs> I wasn't expecting. <laughs> but it's fine. It's very welcome. And uh, yeah, no, I'm just trying to process this whole new perspective I've been given. Uh, like the only people that know how I feel about this is, is like my boyfriend or like mm-hmm. my family and my close friends. Yeah. And that's, and they don't totally understand because they know how, they know how I am personally. Right. Yeah. They know that I really don't care. Like I, I don't. And I'm more about just doing whatever you want, whether you're light skin, you're dark, you're tan, like just do whatever you want. Because mm-hmm. cause that's how I grew up. Just, so. Do you ever see yourself um, coming out about this to your supporters? Or is this something reserved for your closer circle of friends, your family? Um, or I guess the people who bother asking? People who bother asking. <laughs> yeah, and also... Um, I still don't owe everyone online. Yeah. You know, that's true. Yeah. Like if they want to know, then they can, they can ask me and I'm not gonna, since it's not a big part of my life, I won't say it online. You know, also, also that like if, if it wasn't something that, that, um, I went through or anything, I won't say it online. Do you feel like you have this, responsibility you didn't ask for ever since you've been labeled as the morena content creator yeah does that ever get you down because like i can imagine like taking on something that you didn't sign up for anyways is kind of a bummer and it, especially something as big as the whole colorism thing mm-hmm. um i never like when other people would get me for my skin color, like I say for photo shoots, that's how I, that's how I kind of see it. It's more like in a, in a work environment when mm-hmm. people are looking for different kind of models, like white, tan, or morena, then that's like the only time I think about it. Mm-hmm. When I'm just like, oh, okay, I, I, can, I can go, I can work for them because they're looking for a brown model. Yeah. And when it comes to like my social media, and like being what you said, uh, having the responsibility. Mm-hmm. I don't think about it, which I feel bad not thinking about it because it's like what I said before. I just feel bad that I haven't had the experience that other people have, and they're they're coming to me and they're looking for. Um, okay, well, I'm not saying that they're really looking for it, but they're they're coming to me and they're they're saying that. Um, they they've been through so much mm-hmm. because of their skin color, so it is. It sometimes it is, and then sometimes it's not. Because what I said, I don't really owe every everything to everyone. Yeah, I'm very good at disconnecting myself from social media. <laughs> yeah, I I can see that. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> I think we should all have that ability. Um, do you think it's a, it's a title, like given the choice, would you, uh, stop or would you want to stop being labeled like that? Um, I think at this point, I just don't care. Mm-hmm. It's like, just let people, let, I mean, I'm not defeated. It's just like, I don't, I, I don't care as much. Mm-hmm that I am or that I won't be, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because I guess I just see my work differently or like what I put out differently than other people. Like I think like what you said before, what I said about posting a photo, yeah. like why does it have to be about me being Moreno? <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I said that because that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I think that's why I remembered it. I it's pretty know. good. <laughs> so right now I'm feeling like your situation is the kind of the end goal for the project because yeah, hope I think the most ideal future for Brenda Morena is to come to a point where 
brown skin people like you can post photos of, of themselves without having other people attach any kind of um, other meaning to it. Like, why can't we be treated like fair skin exactly. people who post photos of themselves all the time and like you don't have anyone saying, wow, thanks for being so brave or thanks for showing your fair <laughs> skin. It sounds so weird just saying it out loud. Exactly. I guess that's, it's, yeah, that's the it's reality. It's so weird that. how that's normal. Yeah. Thanks for being so brown in the Philippines. <laughs> yeah. We're a tropical country. Thanks for being tan. And you're just like, you're welcome. Like what yeah. I'm, you know. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of reveals how, I don't know, it's just showing me this whole perspective of all this, this whole time, what's the norm is that we're kind of backwards in thinking yeah. that. And then super backwards. <laughs> in your case, you're the one who's on the right track. Well, that's what I like to think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Damn, that's pretty good. No, it's, giving me a, it's giving me a lot to think about. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so, Miranda role models growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Miranda role models if well, you have any or not really not really I just I find people attractive because I find them attractive or I find their work good not mm -hmm. because of their skin color yeah so yeah How but about, oh, I yeah, do relate to a lot of people I would say like that I looked for pegs or for inspo for my photos or for um, for makeup a lot of brown and people mm -hmm. so i guess but that's because i know how the outcome would be because they're the same as me yeah yeah like uh if you could name some names some names some names if anyone comes to mind they all just yeah they're like beauty they're filipino beauty gurus and also yeah. international hmm I can't. I just forgot. I see their faces. Yeah, but I. No, that's fine. But I forgot yeah. their names. <laughs> How about? Do you have any people you see as peers when it comes to being a Morena model or content creator? What What do you mean peers? Like fellow Morena or Morena people? Is that like? A, is there a sense of uh, belonging to this group? I don't know. Is that a thing? It might not be a thing. Um, no. Not really? Okay. <laughs> no. Maybe for other people, but yeah. maybe not, not for me. Huh. I'm pretty, like, pretty diverse in my thinking, I guess. Yeah. So, but I guess that's a good thing. Could help. Maybe that's what I could help people with. Just, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to double check if that was a thing. Apparently, if that not. was a thing, is that a thing with you? Um, I, I guess very faintly. Like there are these people on my feed who I follow, who look like me, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I'm drawn to their stuff more than the people who don't look like me. I don't know. Yeah. That might that might just be me. No, that's normal. But that's the same yeah. with me when it comes to uh, my YouTubers that I watch. Yeah. If, if, if I'm going for a specific thing, uh -huh. then I'll go for them. Nice. You haven't, you haven't posted a, a YouTube video in a while. No. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Whoops. <laughs> Moving on. Um, uh, shoot. No, I'm just... Yeah, still trying to process. I apologize for the pauses in between the, okay. the huge questions. Maybe let's do a lighter, a lighter question. How's your dog doing? What, right? You had a chow chow <laughs> or is that in your family's house? Oh, I had one. Oh, yeah, no. I remember you were, you were like, <laughs> yeah. every time we'd post this, post this story, you'd just be the one replying. Oh, no, no, um, I'm scared to he's ask. Actually, he's with okay. my, yeah, okay. he is. Okay, he's he's with goodness. my brother. He doesn't, right. we were just babysitting him Aww. when he was a puppy because my brother wasn't here. And then he moved. That's sad. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, but you have a, what breed is that? Is that a Corgi? He's an Ascal. Oh, no, an Ascal. Okay. 
Yeah, but he looks pretty good for one. Nice. He's nice. good. I am. He's actually living with my parents now. Yeah. I live with my brother. So we now because there's lockdown, I only see him like once a month. Oh. But it's okay. Oh, no. It doesn't seem like he even cares. Like he cares yeah. for the first ten minutes, and then he's just like, oh, "Bye." Wow, <laughs> that sounds a lot like my cat. Sounds like a cat, right? He yeah. acts like a cat. Oh, here I have this other question. Have you had any experience of people maybe fetishizing you for dark skin? Because I read, I looked this up on some unrelated research. Not, yeah, I mean just general dark skin. <laughs> dark skin people problem research and apparently that's a thing yeah. where somehow these compliments people throw at you are also not compliments because it's more it's of a creepy yeah 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 does that, I have, does that happen yes, a lot it's a thing it's a thing especially if you post a lot of um revealing photos like yeah. how i do like it's it is a thing it's like there, there would be pages that's uh-huh. just dedicated to like oh, brown skin geez. girls. Yeah. And then they're like all in bikinis or like just different kind of girls. And there was these, this one time I was getting these messages from this, this, uh, from this guy, he's Filipino. Yeah. And he kept like sending me these weird ass messages saying like your skin need, like your skin is precious. The Morena skin needs to be taken care of properly. And like, I would be like, Okay. Sir? <laughs> Sir, what? Jeez. Oh, <laughs> like and it'll be written in the each each um word would be cap like the first letter is capital. Yeah. Like it was weird. It was a weird kind of writing. That's not helping. Yeah. Uh. Or like so it does. Yeah. men would message me and be like, You're my um like you're so pretty for Morena. I'm sure people get that. Uh huh. Yeah. Like you know how that sounds. That's not a. Sometimes I want to be like, so what is not what what isn't a pretty maroon? Like, tell me, please. <laughs> or like, why can't you just you know just just compliment? Yeah. Just or say it they as would. It is. Yeah, just say it. Or they would be like, oh, you're my my dark beautiful queen. Jeez, really? <laughs> You've gotten one of that? Yeah, oh. like you know, like like my beautiful dark queen. <sighs> I love you and the crystalline some shit what angel crystalline oh my god princess oh it's so yeah, bad it's so poetic <laughs> it's so bad oh man but i think oh. the worst was when yeah. the guy would tell me that i need to take care of my skin because it's yeah. precious okay. and i was just like block oh shoot <laughs> damn that gives me an idea what if you compiled some of those messages and then we released it as a thing i don't know I think people should be aware sometimes of that I too. Want, sometimes I want to do that. Yeah, you could send it in as someone anonymous, and then. Oh, well, now yeah. your your um your followers are gonna know it's for me. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Oh well. I'm oh, sure well. they won't remember. Those people shouldn't even be sending those kind of messages. I know. <laughs> no, I just had to point that out because yeah, it's apparently a thing that happens, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, those compliments, somehow you can tell, like instinctively in your gut, you just know when it's coming from a, from a weird place and not the, like a healthy and yeah. constructive compliment, which are great to receive. Yeah. Is that enough light questions? Oh, geez. Oh, that was light? <laughs> well, lighter than <laughs> the other stuff. Yeah. No, I think that's that's pretty much it. Um that was un- an unexpected conversation to be honest. Uh shoot. How do you want to end by the way? Do you have a right you said you had a scary story to end on? <laughs> um I have a couple but like it's all in the same ex- yeah. it happened all in the same house. Okay, nice. Yeah, this is a uh, one time I think uh, four, three years ago, yeah. I was staying in. Oh wait, the sorry. Province. Are you are you gonna get into it or? Oh, should we should I get into it later? Yeah, later we can wrap up okay. right now. Actually, unless you have anything else to talk about besides the whole storm of. <laughs> you can talk like I don't mind if 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 it's if there's some things that you want to clarify. I don't mind clarifying it. 
Hmm. No, I think I, I pretty much got the gist of it, of how you don't want to be labeled as such because it's not genuine for you, which I think is mm-hmm. how things should be because, mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of um, a disservice to whoever's following you. To, exactly. It's not honest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's, it's great to know that you have this stance and have this conviction about who you are and what you stand for because I feel like other people would just fold, fold into the pressure and just run with it, especially yeah. if it's something it, they can benefit from. Like, I could, I could be making a lot of money yeah. off of it. Like, yeah. I could. I think about it sometimes. Sometimes I'll be like, damn, if I really, like, embrace this yeah you could i i I, I could like because there's a lot of brands now yeah trying to be diverse trying to be diverse yeah and i see that there's a lot of um they're getting a lot of morena people Mm -hmm. as as their face or like as their ambassadors yeah and like it's good for them that's good like i i think it's a big benefit for the morena person yeah but yeah that's but then i'm just like nah (laughs) Yeah, it's not me. I can't do that. Like, yeah, because I feel so fake. It's dirty money. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, No. Yeah, that's really nice to know how. I think the the movement, even if you're kind of like an observer of it, (laughs) is in good hands. I mean, we're always welcoming to honest people, and yeah, it's nice to have someone with your perspective and yeah it just gives gives people that point of view of how things are backwards and that's the norm and while we're working to reverse that and go on the right track yeah there are people like you that we can look up to and continue to follow even as like some boost of self-esteem and yeah you're doing your own thing hopefully Mm -hmm. people will get something out of that even if you don't mean to. I mean, you're not hurting anyone, so, yeah. Yeah. It's just, I think the main thing is that people need to see how how um, a little bit off it is that you're praising someone for being the normal skin color. Yeah. So that, that, that's the main thing only. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. I think that's enough tidying up. Do you have anything to plug, by the way? Like, where can people follow you? You can follow me on Instagram. Angela's yep. Burgers. And no, it's not because of Angel's Burgers. And it's not because of my body part, which a lot of people think uh-huh. Burgers is for. It's because I love Bob's Burgers and I made it when I was 17. So Nice. <laughs> And uh, do you still get to do food reviews? Because I know on your Instagram, it used to start out as a food Instagram. Yeah. Um, I'm starting now because since the pandemic and lockdown, there's a lot of small businesses opening. Yeah, yeah it's, not like, it's not like I'm really reviewing. I just like, like this is good. <laughs> oh, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, great. So we can get to our ending thing. Let's let's hear that scary story and maybe I'll fade out somewhere. <laughs> um, so this one time I was about three years ago, I was staying in the province back in Vigan. And I know mm-hmm. that they're known for a lot of uh, superstitious yeah. and a lot of ghosts there, right? So I was staying at this one house and but most of the time I was alone because the people I were living with um, they had work. Yeah. And I was, it was these, it was a big house in one of those secluded neighborhoods where there's a lot of other big houses, but it's more like caretakers. And it's yeah. like off from the, off from the main city. So I was upstairs and every time I would like, you know how, I don't know how to explain it, but this certain part of the house would always seem a little bit too dark, even during the day. Yep. Yeah, like it was just, it, and I always felt so uncomfortable because there's, um, there's a balcony where the, where the landing is. We go, we go upstairs and you can look over, you see the living room and then the kitchen's there. So your back is always, your back yeah. is always to the, to the landing. And I always just felt like someone was watching me. 
And uh-huh. this is something you don't want to think about or feel, especially when you're alone. So yeah. I know, like, I don't know what I know, but I'm just saying that the house felt very tight. Yeah. And it was always super dark up there. And that's where the rooms were. Uh So besides that feeling, um, so there were a couple of nights I was alone and I would, um, the door would always like around, let's say in the afternoon, this doesn't, Uh this doesn't happen during the night. Some of them don't even happen during the night. So one time around 12 in the afternoon, the door would always like, like that. Yeah. Just like a little rattle. And the first few nights that I have, I mean, sorry, the first few afternoons that it happened, I, like, I just, and I was always, most of the time I was napping, I was watching because I didn't want to think about being alone. Yeah. I would just be like this super dismissive and you don't want to think about it because if yeah, you think you about it, then, then something might, yeah. I, I don't want to believe it. And so the last night I was there, I was packing, I was by myself and I was blasting music. I always played music. Uh-huh. I was blasting music and then. Um, I was in the room and the door is kind of behind it. You go like you walk around and then that's a door. And then I was like behind the other wall. Yeah. I was packing my stuff and I was waiting. I was uh, waiting for the people I was living with. I was waiting for them to come home. And then the door, it opened and then it shut. And I was like, oh, I knew it wasn't them. But I was like, oh, they're here. Yeah. Oh, yeah I knew. I yeah. knew. Okay. I knew, I knew, but I just wanted to be like, because my body was already reacting, going towards the door. But in my head, I was like, no, no, yeah. just no. Jeez. So I was already going through the door. I opened it. Like I was like praying that there was someone there. Yeah. I opened it. I looked out in, in the landing, completely dark. Oh, like just too dark. I shut the door. I locked it so it doesn't open. And I just went back to packing. Like I didn't think about it. Yeah. And the majority, like, Little things like that would happen. But the night that I was leaving when the door completely opened, that was the biggest like interaction. Maybe because I was leaving. So it was like just one more. Yeah, just one more to send you off. Just yeah, and I was just like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy I'm gone. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, but I get that. You you do whatever you can just not to You don't want to think not- about it. Yeah. And I didn't even I didn't even talk about it when I finally went back to Manila. It was uh, just like, I got geez. chill. I need yeah. to chill first. That last one really got me, you know? Yeah, and so far, no spirits wherever you're living right now. Um, so far, hopefully not. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it for the episode. Thanks so much for being part, Angela. Thanks for inviting me. He invited me here. It was, um, it was honestly, it felt good to finally talk about it publicly. Mm-hmm. And there, there's a lot of times I would rant to my boyfriend or my friends about this. Like the rants, there's a lot of, I just don't want people to take it bad because yeah. it, it comes from a place where it comes from, I, I like to think a good place. <laughs> yeah. You just want to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. scared of being judged by fellow Morenos. Like, that's my fear. And why, why, why am I scared of being judged by people that look like me? Yeah. Like, you know? So, just being yeah. honest. Yeah. And in case anything happens online, we've got your back. So, <laughs> there's that to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. Let's well, just maybe, see. you know, it's... I just, it, I, I feel like it's time for me to say it because I've been on there for so long and mm-hmm. I just, I just want people to know how I grew up, how I experienced it and how yeah. I, how I see things. So that's, that's nice. all. All right. Thanks. And I hope we get to check up on you maybe sometime in the future and see where, where this ends up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll see you around. Bye-bye. Bye.